Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so the next idea or concept that we're going to talk about are similar triangles. Now, let's make a shift. We're no longer talking about right triangles. Let's make that very, very clear. These are not right triangles solely. These are any two triangles that we deem to be similar. Now, in mathematics, when we call something similar, we mean something very, very definite. What we mean is, if two triangles are similar, if they have identical interior angle measurements. Another way to say that is corresponding angles equal. That's another way of saying that, which may be a better way of saying that. Corresponding interior angles equal. Okay, let me make that a little bit bigger. Two triangles are similar if corresponding interior angles are equal, and they're also similar if corresponding sides have an equal ratio. Corresponding side lengths have the same ratio. Now, that's what it means when we talk about two triangles being similar. And that's a very, very formal way of talking about it. Can I give you a very informal way of talking about it? Two triangles are similar if the following is true. They have same shape, different size. And, and, and that's what it really means, that you have the exact same shape, but they're different sizes. And that's what similar triangles are. Now, mathematically, it means very, very specifically, interior angles are going to be equal, and corresponding side lengths are going to have the same proportion. And we're going to use that, but the reality is I'm talking about two things that have the exact same shape, but they're very different sizes. So let me show you, just writing on a piece of paper, what I might be talking about. If I had a triangle here, and I had a bigger triangle, and if they were the same shape, but one is much bigger than the other, do you agree? We would call these similar triangles. Now, there would be some similarities about them. If this was angle A, B, and C, and this was X, Y, and Z, and if I wanted to say that these triangles were similar, first of all, I would say triangle A, B, C. That's how I talk about triangle. And I would say triangle X, Y, Z. And if I wanted to say that they were similar, I'd use a special sign that looks like this. Isn't that a great sign? That sign means similar. And it's a new sign, and you're going to have to get used to it. It means similar. And if these two triangles are similar, what that means is that this angle is going to equal this angle. They're going to be the same angle measurement. And if they're similar, this angle measure will equal this angle measure. And if they're similar, that means that this angle measure, I'll use phi, is going to equal that angle measure. Because that's one of the things about similar triangles, is that their interior angles, their corresponding interior angles are the same measure. Now, something else that's kind of interesting. Do you see this length BC? Do you see this length YZ? They're obviously not the same length, are they? One's bigger than the other. That's how we get different sizes. Do you see this side length? 
AB. Do you see this side length? XY. Again, they're obviously different, aren't they? And again, AC is obviously different than XZ. But the ratios are going to be the same. And what that means, now we've learned about ratio. Ratio means fraction, right? We've talked about the sine ratio, opposite over hypotenuse. We've talked about the cosine ratio, adjacent over hypotenuse. So these ratios are going to be the same. So if I take this side and its corresponding side, so I can't mix and match, but if I take this side and this side and I find its ratio, that that ratio between those two sides is going to equal the ratio between those two sides, which is going to equal the ratio between those two sides. And that's just cool. Okay? So I'm telling you a couple of things here about similar triangles. I'm telling you that the corresponding angles will equal, and corresponding means this angle A, this angle X. This angle B will equal the corresponding angle Y. This angle C is going to equal this angle Z. And I'm telling you that the side lengths won't be equal, definitely not. But the ratio, and what that means is that if this is 2, 3, and 7, and this ratio over here is 4, so if this one's 4, that means the 2 had to be multiplied by 2, guess what this is? 6. And guess what this is? 14. Because the ratio has to be the same. What that means is that this triangle is in essence twice as big, if you will, from this triangle. It's been blown up by a multiple of two, all the side lengths. Does that make sense? Now, if I went the other way with the ratios, it too would be the same. So notice when I went this way, I went from the smaller AB to the larger XY. And then I went from the smaller BC and then I went to the larger YZ, and then I went from the smaller AZ. So in other words, all of one triangle has to be on top, and all of the other triangle has to be on the bottom. You need to do the same thing. So this would have also been true had I said XY, so this one, divided by the smaller one, AB, and that would have equaled XZ, over the corresponding smaller one, AZ, and that would have been YZ over top of the corresponding smaller one, BC. And notice that ratio is fine as well. Okay, so that was a heck of an introduction, went pretty fast. Let's come back to our example. Let's remember what it means to have similar triangles. It means that they're going to have the same shape but different sizes. And for a triangle to have the same shape, its interior angles have to have the same measure. That's the only way that's going to work. But the sides are going to be different, right? That's how it gets bigger or smaller. When naming similar triangles, the letters representing the equal angles are written in the same order. So this is triangle ABC is similar. That's what that symbol says to triangle DEF. And what that means, because they've written it like that, this means that angle A has got to equal angle D, because they put angle A first and angle D sec uh, first over here. That means that angle B must equal angle E, and that means that angle C must equal angle F. They have to be written in the order of the equal angles. So, given the, this information, find all the missing measures to the nearest tenth. So just by knowing this, I know that angle A must equal angle D. So angle D must equal 28 degrees. And taking a look at this, angle B has got to equal angle E. So 120 must be equal to angle E, or 121 degrees. And angle C, which I don't know in this triangle,
But I do know in this triangle, his angle F must equal 31 degrees. Cool? That's the easy part. That's finding out the angles. The sides are a little bit trickier, but we, if we use the naming convention, we'll be fine. Notice, this is one triangle, this is the other triangle. So I need all my sides for one triangle on the top, and I need all my corresponding sides for the other triangle on the bottom. It doesn't matter which one, but you've got to start with one and stick to it. So, this triangle, I'm going to start with the side AB. Here's the side AB. The side AB's corresponding side will be DE. See how that order is? AB, it must be the first two over here, DE. So its corresponding side is this one, which means that I can write AB divided by DE, so that's a ratio, has to equal, now what's my next two? BC. Well, here's BC. Correspondingly, it's going to be EF. So it's over here. So BC over EF. And my third ratio would be the side length AC. So going from A to C. D to F. So notice I can figure out this ratio without actually having to see the triangle, can't I? As long as they name it properly, I can figure this out. So now I can put in some numbers. So AB actually equals 12.1. DE is unknown. I don't know what DE is. BC. BC is here. I don't know what BC is. EF is 8.8. AC is 20.1, and DF is 16.1. Okay, so I've got some information here. This is three ratios all being equal to each other. I don't have to work with all three. I can choose to work with any two at a time. Look what happens if I cover up this one. If I cover up this one, then I've got 12.1 over DE equals 20.1 over 16.1. That's one unknown, and I can solve that if I know some algebra. Look what happens if I cover up this one. I get BC over 8.1 equals 20.1 over 16.1. I can solve for BC if I know some algebra. Look what happens if I cover up this one. I have two unknowns. I can't solve for anything. So that's a bad thing to do, isn't it? That's not going to get me anywhere. So I'm going to come back a little bit so I have some more screen to work with. I'm going to, for, let's say I want to try to get BC first. So for BC, I'm going to use BC over 8.8 equals 20.1 over 16.1. So for BC, I'm going to ignore this one. This is just like what we've been doing. We're going to cross multiply, but in only one direction. I'm not going to move the 16.1. I'm going to leave it where it is. So what I'm going to end up with is BC equals 20.1 times 8.8 .8 over 16.1. Using your calculator, 20.1 times 8.8 .8 equals, divided by 16.1. I'm going to check that because I'm not sure. 20.1 times 8.8 .8 divided by 16.1. Yep. So the side length BC to the nearest tenth, do we remember what tenth means? One decimal place. You need to know that. So to one decimal place, now this is tricky, that 8 makes that 9 move up, so it's going to be 11.0. And you need that point zero. So I figured out the length of BC. 
what about the length of DE? So over here I'm going to say for DE. So I want DE this time. I'm going to ignore the middle one. I'm going to use 12.1 divided by DE equals 20.1 over 16.1. Now this one's a bit of a pain. The DE is on the bottom. You have two ways to handle this. We can handle this like we did trigonometry. And that was to cross multiply, but you're gonna move both things. So we're gonna get 12.1 times 16.1 equals 20.1 times DE. DE is not isolated. We want to isolate DE. What's the 20.1 doing to the DE? Multiplying. What's the opposite of multiplying? Dividing. So we're going to divide this side by 20.1, leaving me with DE. And we're going to divide this side by 20.1 to keep the equality. Using your calculator, just going to check that to make sure I did it right. And I come up with 9.7. I probably should put an approximate sign up there. So, I now know all of the side lengths. I know that BC is 11.0, and I know that DE is 9.7, and I calculated all the angles, and I'm done that question, albeit a little messy. I'm going to pause the video there, and we'll come right back.